This is the cord that comes on a skill saw. This is the cord I'm going to put on this skill saw. I've put a long cord on every skill saw I've owned since 1989. My piecework roof stacking partner, John Urban, showed up on the first day I worked with him with a long cord on his skill saw, and I was hooked. So I'm going to show you the way I put a cord on a saw. And once this saw has a cord on it, it's going to start living in the tool tank, and it's going to start seeing some hard duty. So I'm not an electrician. In fact, any time I start thinking about electrical work, my tail gets bushy. You know what I mean? It's just not my deal. But the first thing I do is I start on the male plug end. I've got to put a good plug on this. This plug is rated for 15 amps, which is what the saw draws. You cut off enough of the sheath, about an inch, that it's going to remain buried inside the fitting when you put it all together. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. It's easy to make this mistake. See, I, I cut off too much of the sheath when I put the switch together, and so now these are exposed. I've got to fix that. You don't want to do that. That's a mistake. This is a 12 gauge wire. It's got a nice flexible rubber jacket. It's good from uh, 40 below to 90 above centigrade. You don't want to go with a 14 gauge because you're adding a lot of distance to your conductor length and you can get a voltage drop, which is not good. Stranded. Stranded wire is important, they tell me. If you want to use it as an extension cord, you got to be able to wind it up. So I've got the male plug on the other end of the cord. The cord is about 54 feet long. Anywhere from 40 to 60 feet is just about right, in my humble opinion. So now it's time to take the handle apart to get into the switch on the skill saw so we can take the factory 14 gauge cord off and put it back with a, tw uh, put a 12 gauge cord back in. It'll just fit through the boot. It should just fit into here. It's all kind of tight and squishy, but let's see how we do. So there's a couple of things. You're going to want to cut the wires off at the same length relative to each other. Black and white the same, ground just a little shorter. You're going to need some sort of a ring connector. These come without any insulation because technically it doesn't need it. The only thing that I've been able to find here in my community are these little guys that are made for 14 gauge. We're putting 12 on, so it's going to be a bit of a fight to slip this over the whole conductor. We'll see how it works. We may have to remove a few of the strands. That's probably not approved, but it's what we can do. So here we are. I want to make the length of the conductors the same, and I want to make the amount of boot that's taken off, of sheath that's taken off, the same. So we're going to guess about like that on the length of the conductor and cut the length of the sheath off right there. without slicing through the insulation. Take off a little bit. Yep, that's it. Now this one, I'm gonna cut off about there. Twist these down pretty tight. and Let's see if they're going to work. Oh boy, that's going to be tough. Did it. Ha ha. Okay, there's one. There we go. When you're manipulating these screws, you have to pay attention and never forget that in the 21st century, it's considered standard practice sometimes to thread screws into plastic or fiberglass. 
or whatever the material is on the other side so they're easy to strip. So in general, you take them up to where they're just good and snug, but once they're snug, you back off of it. The little ring terminals are a little critical. You have to get a ring terminal that will fit, whose outside diameter will fit inside of the receptacle on the switch and whose inside diameter will accommodate the screw that goes in. If you have to, you can just wrap the wire around the screw on this switch, but it's not good. In fact, it's really not good. Little strands can work their way out of there and short. And so a ring terminal is the way to go. For this saw, Ace Hardware's blue ring terminals are just right. Strain relief is important. You have to be sure to get plenty of bitter ends sticking past inside the saw. So when you tighten those little screws down, that little bar, that little friction maker will hold the sheath and all of the conductors and everything firmly to the handle so when you lower the saw by the cord you're not putting any strain on the actual electrical connections. So the advantage of putting a, an extension cord onto your skill saw permanently is obvious. You don't have to carry an extension cord with you. And about 99 times out of 100 a skill saw is used more than six feet away from an outlet and about 90 times out of 100 when you plug into an extension cord the first time you head up a ladder you're going to unplug it. So for me if you actually intend to be productive, I don't see any way to improve a 40 to 60 foot cord 12 gauge, hardwired directly into your skill saw, so you can pull it out of the truck, unwind your cord and go to work in one smooth movement. And uh, by the time you've used this about a day and a half, I, I'm confident you're gonna look at it the same way. If there is a downside to this, it's that now you have to be able to store a 60 foot extension cord carefully along with your skill saw and wind it up in contact with your skill saw and that's a little tricky and the last thing you want to do is have a knotted up extension cord that's tied to your skill saw because then not only do you not save time but it costs you time. This is my tool tank we've got a couple of videos or there's videos about this truck and this is where this saw is going to live from now on so it would be a problem if that cord got tangled up right a real problem. So let me show you how I deal with that so I never have to worry about taking care of the cord. I do a daisy chain or a chain stitch. It's, you know, it, what it really is a single stitch crochet. And in order to start that you need a loop in your line. I start the chain stitch at the saw. Take the bitter end, drop it through the D handle. I take the first bite of both lines and stick it through the top handle. See that? That's the start point every time. Let me, let me pull that right up about like that, okay? There's how I'm gonna start this cord every time I ever put it away. I've got a loop, I take a bite of both sides of the line and I put it through and I put it through and I put it through and I put it through. See that? The way this works is, if you tangle your cord intentionally, it's never going to get tangled up accidentally. See that? Now what that means is, I can pick that saw up like this, and drop it in the box. So what that means is, when you pull it out, and it looks like a terrible mess, you put it on the ground and you grab the end of your cord and you just unwind it. And you're ready to go to work. You see that? And you're not putting a twist in it over and over. You can just plug it in and you're back at it. This may not be for you, but if you're a framer, if you get out on a site, you've got to be able to reach a good distance from where you're plugged in. You've got to climb up in the rafters. I don't think you can beat it on a skill saw mag 77. Thanks for watching.